One of the things that has come out uh, over the past uh, few weeks is uh, Zimbabwe indicating that it would like to renegotiate its uh, its uh, its loan package with the with the IMF. What do you make of this uh, of this of this move? Well, look, the the issue is that um, uh, Zimbabwe has got a debt overhang, an unsustainable debt overhang of over nine billion US dollars. So it only makes sense. It only makes sense that Zimbabwe will try to uh, to go for debt relief. But I think the real issue here is has Zimbabwe uh, done enough uh, to end the support uh, and goodwill of the international uh, community. And uh, in my opinion, it, Zimbabwe has to walk the talk and pass certain tests in order to end uh, international uh, acceptance and, uh, and, and legitimacy. Zimbabwe must attend to the issues of constitutionalism, of contested uh, legitimacy, of uh, the rule of law. It must attend to issues such as electoral reform. It must attend to issues such as space given to uh, uh, civic society uh, and, um, and uh, 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 opposition political uh, parties. It must attend to the reform agenda, including alignment of our laws to the uh, new constitution. Uh, this it is not uh, done. So any attempt to engage Zimbabwe at the present moment are premature uh, because Zimbabwe has not walked the talk. Right. Now, you've talked about uh, constitutional uh, development. Uh, this uh, brings into question uh, the issue of succession. And a lot has been said about the uh, potential uh, for uh, uh, leadership succession uh, inside uh, Zimbabwe. What do you make of this? Look, we have a president who is uh, 92 years in office and he has spent uh, more than 37 years uh, uh, misrunning uh, uh, our, our country. So, so really, the question of uh, transition has to be dealt with. The question of uh, succession has to be dealt with. But regrettably, this state like most African states, does not have the machinery, the experience uh, of dealing with uh, succession. So one of the stress points right now has become how Zimbabwe is going to transit uh, from Mugabe to a de democratic uh, dispensation. My suspicion is that if we don't do it well, then we'll have yet another instance of uh, a delayed transition or an arrested transition. And that's the danger that Zimbabwe faces at the present moment. So what would you identify as the larger uh, democratization uh, challenges that would have to face any uh, uh, potential uh, successor, irrespective of who it is? I think that uh, beyond Mugabe, uh, Zimbabwe must uh, consider in the international community and the regional communi community must consider this as an opportunity for Zimbabwe to renew itself, an opportunity for Zimbabwe to restart itself. And I think there are about eight critical issues that uh, uh, that transitional process uh, after Mugabe must deal with. I think the first thing is just the maintenance of uh, 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 peace and stability. We've always taken uh, peace and stability and the sovereign integrity of Zimbabwe uh, for granted. But there are obvious threats right now that we could have a war, we could have an implosion. So maintaining st peace and stability will be critical. The key issue of restoring the social contract, restoring the trust between the state and the citizen, and dealing with certain issues that are critical to restoring that, that trust, including issues around uh, the transi transitional justice, uh, national healing, uh, and, and so forth. The, the issue of economic rehabilitation, which should involve two key components. One is an emergency recovery fund for Zimbabwe, and the second is dealing uh, in a holistic manner with Zimbabwe's uh, uh, overwhelming uh, debt uh, 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 crisis, uh, restoring supply-side uh, recovery and macroeconomic uh, uh, stability. Uh, completing the unfinished business of constitutional reform. We have a terrible chapter 5 which deals with uh, the creation of an imperial president. I think Zimbabweans are tired of power 
and the power that is not accountable to the people. So let's have a, probably a prime minister. Let's have constitutional amendment that create a prime minister who is elected by parliament and accountable to, to parliament. The American model of a powerful executive president has not served Zimbabwe well nor Africa well in general. Our electoral system is part of constitutional reform. We have this winner-take-all, first-past-the-post uh, uh, system, which again has created a political monopoly and at the very minimum a duopoly. I think we need to liquidate that by introducing a proportional uh, representation so that we have multiple voices uh, in our National Assembly. It's the issue of realigning our laws uh, to, the, uh, to the new uh, constitution. Uh, so you, you have a progressive constitution there, but laws are still lagging behind. Uh, the key question of uh, electoral reform standing on its own, we need a biometric uh, voters roll for, for a start that is in electronic form. We need a new, brand new electoral act. We need access to our elections by the international community, including the UN and UN agencies. Uh, we need uh, media reform so that there is equal access to the media uh, by all parties. We need uh, uh, traditional leaders and other forces to be kept out of our, our, our election. Uh, next, the issue of Zimbabwe's re-engagement. Zimbabwe can't afford to be isolated and it needs a foreign policy that looks neither west, east or south but just forward. Uh, it's a tiny little country so it needs to make friends and make friends with every four corners uh, of uh, the, the, the globe. So that will be critical. Uh, next, we need to put a full stop to the land question. Uh, 20 years after the land reform program, the land question still dodges uh, Zimbabwe. We used to be the breadbasket of a region of the region. Now we are a, a net food importer, and there are certain things that we need to deal with to restore the land uh, market. We need to stop continuous farm invasions and lawlessness uh, on farms. We need to deal uh, with the issue of full compensation to those that uh, lost uh, their land during the land reform exercise, and then uh, we need to deal with. Uh, the issue of a land audit, an independent land audit, to fret out the multiple farm owners that are clogging uh, the system. We need to deal with the agriculture revolution, coming up with a proper model for agriculture that is market-based and in respect of which farmers can maximize the value uh, of their land. And then lastly, uh, we need the issue of security sector, security sector reform uh, and security sector realignment. We have a constitution that says uh, the securocratic uh, arm of the state must be independent and neutral, but that's not uh, the position. So we need security sector realignment. So those things are critical in a post-Mugabe uh, uh, era to, uh, to put Zimbabwe and place Zimbabwe in an irrevocable pathway of sustainability. Otherwise, we'll continue to be a fragile state with 79% of the population surviving on less than US $1.25 a day, and that's not good enough. Indeed. Now, um, uh, Honorable BT, you um, talked about uh, all these elements that need to be in place, the security sector reform, constitutionalism, the electoral system uh, reform as well. In 2002-2003, uh, the African Union agreed, um, adopted, in fact, a charter on uh, elections, democracy, and governance, and certain benchmarks were identified. This was an African project. Um, how, what, are, what are the prospects, um, you know, looking at this charter and looking at the African continent as it is? Uh, what are the prospects uh, that some of these uh, benchmarks uh, might be achieved, and what are the constraints that you see moving forward? I think that um, the short-term future of the African continent uh, is very bleak, and it's bleak precisely because of uh, the crisis of leadership that we have on the continent at the present moment uh, in time. Uh, I think we have a coterie uh, of uh, leaders at state level that have captured uh, the state, uh, that have challenges of legitimacy in their own domestic uh, 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 jurisdictions and ju domestic countries, that to expect them at continental level to preach and implement good hygiene, good standards, is asking them uh, too much from them. 
So if you have a coterie of leaders like uh, President Yoweri Museveni, like uh, Paul Bia of uh, Cameroon, uh, President Robert Mugabe of, uh, of uh, Zimbabwe, Nguru Nzinda of, uh, of Burundi, I think it's just asking uh, too much. I think we missed a moment uh, when the, we had the likes of uh, Tabombeki, uh, Abdullahi Wade, and others, to, to name a few. So I think at this present moment in time, we've got a serious challenge in, 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 in leadership. Uh, if if uh, the continent is dominated by people like uh, Biang of uh, Equatorial Guinea, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge. We also have a challenge of uh, fragility uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the continent. Uh, the crisis and, and, and the continued reproduction of what I call states in permanent crisis. The Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, Eritrea, South Sudan, and, and, and so forth. So I think at the present moment, um, the continent is in retreat. Uh, and I think that uh, we have to deal with this uh, leadership uh, deficit that is arresting the continent at the present moment. Well, uh, with that, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much.